The more and more I play PAL World, the more I'm learning about this game. There's always something new to learn, always something new to experience. And in this video, I want to share everything I've learned thus far playing PAL World. I have a lot of insanely helpful tips that I want to pass down to you. And my goal for this video is to just make it super helpful and valuable, and hopefully it is. And yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, so my first tip is when you're trying to relocate your base or transfer materials from one base to another, the grappling gun allows you to move while you're encumbered. And I kind of have my base set up pretty optimal to where if I use the grappling gun, it'll let me move pretty easily around the base, which I'll demonstrate that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer some materials to my other base. I have some ore and I have some coal that I'm going to transfer. So let's go ahead and put that in my inventory. And as you can see, I'm gonna be encumbered. I'm encumbered right now. But basically what you can do is we're gonna go ahead and use the grappling gun right here. And then once I get back to my base, I'll show you exactly how you can uh, use the grappling gun to kind of get around really easily. All right, so here we are back in my base. Now check this out. I actually have this wall built right here next to my chest because it helps me to move around pretty easily and transfer my materials. All right, so let's go ahead and shoot this thing at the wall and check this out. As you can see right here, pretty seamless. I can just open up my case and I can transfer the materials to the case right here. So we'll go ahead and put this right in here. And now that I can walk, I'm just gonna go over here and I'll make 82 of these. So yeah, really having this wall is really efficient. Whenever you fast travel, you always spawn behind the PAL box. So just make sure you put the wall in front of the PAL box. All right, so my next tip is that dark pals do not sleep. Other than a few naps here and there, they basically work 24 seven. Now, since dark pals do not sleep, they'll lose sanity a lot faster. So I recommend having some of these uh, hot springs around your base. I have some over here. All right, so here's my next tip. It's gonna help you level up a lot faster without any cheats or glitches. But if you use this deer right here, now I gotta say this deer is an amazing mount for catching more pals. Because what this uh, deer can do is this deer can actually run into the pal right here. And as you can see, it stuns it, which makes it really easy to capture. So you can just go around here and just stun them, catch them. Uh, make sure you target from the back so you get the back bonus. But it makes it very, very convenient to catch more pals. And obviously, you know, how you level up is by catching pals. So the more pals you catch, the faster you level up. And check that out. We literally just caught like five pals in the span of 15 seconds. Now there's this thing called the Statue of Power. It looks like a, a big tall Lucario Anubis looking thing. And this thing right here can increase your capture power. Uh, you know those little Lift Monk uh, infigies that you see all around the map? Yeah, you can use that on the Statue of Power and it will increase your uh, capture power, making it easier to capture pals. You can also offer pal souls to it to enhance your pal stats. Now, if you wanna learn more about leveling up and you don't hate glitches, I actually have a video that demonstrates how to get 2 million XP really fast. Now, my next tip is something that I wish I would've known a lot sooner in my playthrough. I would've leveled up so much faster, but get one of these Vixies right here as soon as possible. I mean, they might look cute and cuddly and not very useful, but they're one of the most useful pals in the game because they will farm you an unlimited amount of pal spheres. And really all you got to do is put them in the ranch and they'll start farming pal spheres for you. And if you want to catch yourself a Vixie, you can find Vixies right here on the map. But basically, if you get three or four of them inside a ranch, you'll never have to worry about pal spheres. Now, my next tip is something that I wish I would have known a lot sooner during my playthrough. I did not know you can do this until I was level 45. You can actually slide just by holding the B button on Xbox. I don't know what it is on PC. Check this out, which makes it really easy and fast getting around the map. It's also really fun to do. Now, if you want to move even faster, I recommend getting the Gale Claw Glider. Uh, from my understanding, it is the fastest glider in the game, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Like, you can actually shoot while you're on the glider, which is really fun and really cool. I believe that's the only glider that allows you to do that, so it's definitely worth getting. Now, my next tip is whenever you're having your pals work at your base, 
What I like to do is I like to prioritize pals that specialize in one to two skills. If they have more than one or two skills, ideally they should have one skill, but if they have a bunch of skills that they're good at, like if they're the jack of all trades, uh, I've, I've noticed that they get confused a lot of the times or they'll work on things that I don't really want them to work on. So I'll have to move them around more often. For example, Tan Z can do five different things, so I wouldn't set him on my base if I want him to do some planting. Instead, I would set, like, Gum Moss, for example, because he only focuses on planting. However, it's only level one. I just know that planting will get done if they specialize in one thing. Like, Batilia over here is a really good pal. I'm not saying that Jack of All Trade pals are bad by any means. Now, my next tip is that if there's a pal that you really, really want, but you can't seem to catch it, check and see if you can breed it. Uh, I really, really want an Anubis, but Anubis is a boss, and Anubis is super hard to catch, and especially if you're early in the game. But then I learned if you breed a Celeray with the Relaxasaurus, you'll actually get an Anubis. So you can get Anubis pretty early in the game, which is really cool. Now my next tip is that if you actually go to your feed box, or your storage chest, or your cooler, if you hit the sort button, it'll actually reset the timer on your, uh, your food. I don't know if that's a glitch or if that's intended or not, but it's I think it's useful to know another thing that I've noticed is that cakes never expire when they're in the little breeding chest and if you have multiple food pots you don't have to collect them all at once so if you don't collect them they're not going to expire now I'm sure most of us will use cakes for breeding but I've noticed for like alpha pokemon that that require a lot of food like one cake will give them max uh, food bar if you want to learn more about making cakes check out my cake guide all right so my next tip if you ever need a certain pow or an item like medicine or maybe you need some ammo I recommend capturing one of these merchants over here and yes you can actually capture humans which is pretty wild so this wandering merchant right here that I've caught if I go ahead and click on them, as you can see, I can buy ammo from the Wandering Merchant. Obviously, you know, if you make your own ammo, it's going to save you a lot more money. But in my opinion, if you have a bunch of money and you're short on time, just buy it. And uh, this Wandering Merchant right here that I caught, he has medicine. And the Black Marketeer, he's, he's currently sleeping, but I'm going to talk to him anyway. Obviously, you know, you can buy a bunch of cool pals from them. And let's say I don't like any of the pals that he's selling, or maybe I have every single one of them. Uh, a little trick that you can do is, you can actually go back to your pal box, and you can take out the Black Marketeer, you can put him back in uh, the box, and then put him back in your base, and then you can talk to him again, buy Contraband, and he's got some new pals that you can buy. All right, so my next tip, some pals actually have passive skills to increase your movement speed. Like Nibble is a skill that does that. Swift is a 30% increase to movement speed. And then we also have Runner, and Runner increases the movement speed by 20%. Now those skills only increase the movement speed of the pals. If you wanna increase your own movement speed, there's a skill called Motivational Leader, which that will increase your speed by 25% if you have a pal in your party that has that skill. Now there are also skills that will increase the work speed like Sirius is one of them right here we also have Cassided that increases work speed and finally we have work slave which increases the work speed by 30 percent however it decreases the attack by 30 percent so you know for a fact it's not going to be used in your party it's going to be used at your base now most people know that you can have daydream outside of your party to fight with you, but did you know you can also have Dazzy tag along too? Uh, both these pals can fight outside of your party, which could really make you pretty OP having two pals outside at once, plus even a third pal of your own choosing. So just imagine how much damage you can do. You're gonna have to craft either a harness or a necklace for them, which can be done at the pal bench. All right, so here's my next tip. So you guys see this uh, thick boy right here, King Paka. Well, King Paka will actually give you an extra 100 more capacity for your inventory space, as long as you have him in your party and you craft his saddle. As you can see right here, I have 800 inventory space because he's in my party. Now, if I take him out of my party, As you can see, it drops down to 700. What's really cool is that you can ride him too. And he's actually not that slow. He's not terribly slow. 
So it's nice being able to have that extra 100 more capacity plus having a mount that you can ride on. It makes it pretty convenient, I gotta say. Anyway guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope you found it valuable and helpful. If you have any tips for me, be sure to let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you later.